I live in northern British Columbia in Canada. And as you can see, we are in the beginning of our winter. This is our house. And this over here is my wife's pottery studio. When she's making pottery, she uses a lot of water. And typically she has to run back to the house, get some water and come back again. So what I did this summer is I ran a water line underground from the house about 100 feet from just in front of the house under the ground right over to the pottery studio and because the ground we have here is rock I could only go down about two feet which means it's the water line is susceptible to freezing and what you see here this coil of insulated tubing is what I used to put under the ground for the water line and I have, the end of the tubing is taped up, but you can see it's an insulated tubing line. We're at the beginning of our winter now, but we've already had temperatures down to minus 28. And in the middle of winter, we can get temperatures that are lower than minus 40. This morning, it started out at minus 20. And right now, at 12.30 in the afternoon, it's minus 11 and 26 degrees on the east. This is the water line that we ran from the house to the pottery studio an insulated water line with a jacket on the outside to protect it. This is a compression fitting over top of the tubing. It's going to compress the tubing on top of this barbed piece once we get this inserted into the tubing. I've already put the heat cable through the fittings and here it is protruding out of the barbed fitting. This is going to go towards the house. We're going to push it through the water line to the house. This is the coil of heat cable, and as we showed you earlier, it's inserted into this three-quarter inch T. You'll need a three-quarter inch T in order to complete the installation. There's also, in addition to the three-quarter inch T, there's also a three-quarter inch nipple. And this fitting goes from one inch male NPT to three-quarter inch male NPT. This is your three-quarter inch nipple. And this is your three-quarter inch T. This will supply water to the pottery studio. And this is where the brass grommet and nut are going to go into here. I'm going to put a little bit of dish soap in here. That'll help the heat cable to slide through the tubing with minimal resistance. Okay, I'm going to start pushing the cable in. It goes quite easily. I keep the coil in my hand. Just keep unwinding it. And feed a bit more in, it goes in very easily. Okay. Okay, we're getting close to the end. You can see how easy this is going in. I just take about eight inches at a time and push it in. Uncoil it a bit. And then keep pushing. Very easy. A child can do it. That's great. This is the three-quarter inch fitting with the grommet for the watertight seal and the follower and the nut. I'm going to put Teflon tape on the threads of the three-quarter inch fitting so that we get a, a nice, tight, watertight seal. Okay. I'm also putting on a little bit of sealant here, and it's also an anti-seize compound so that the metal threads on this fitting don't seize in the T. screwing in the fitting right now. I'm using these channel lock pliers or water pump pliers to finish tightening the watertight fitting into the T, just about there. I pushed through 90 feet of heat cable without an issue. So there's the grommet, watertight seal on the cable the follower, and the nut. Now I'm going to tighten the nut. Need a pair of backup pliers, water pump pliers. And we'll just tighten the nut down to get our seal. So I'm going to plug the cable into the electrical outlet. And right now the water line is not filled with water. It just has air in it, but the manual says that's okay. You can do that. 
and it won't overheat. So I'm going to plug it in and we'll see if the green light comes on to make sure that it's operating properly. There you go. And there's the green light. So it's working perfect.